one of the things I'll talk about clinical governance, it's what I'm seeing is very interesting is it doesn't actually really matter if the organization is um, big or small because it really boils down to again, you know, who are the people who are driving this or who are leading this. You could have a really large organization um, and have very sophisticated ways in how they capture the data, but if people in the front line don't analyze the data and don't do anything about it, um, they're none the wiser than the other, um, than a smaller provider who, who don't actually have these systems and processes, and but are actually understanding the impact mm. of those incidents and the impact of those, um, um, you know, as you say, you know, those um, very unfortunate incidents that happen in that organization. So. Um, it is something that's really important as well, but equally as important if it's being driven by um, people who really, you know, um, are able to understand the importance of this and trickle down to staff. And um, what's good about um, the coming, uh, what's coming with the new standards is um, for aged care is actually the, um, as you say, there's accountability now with regards to the new standards. Um, what that looks like, obviously, if they are being assessed by the commission um, that um, they um, don't have that structure in place with governance. It's more so to do with repercussions mm. of obviously they get sanctioned yes. and obviously they mm. lose funding. So that's um, that's one thing that's coming that, that we hopefully could see a difference and hopefully mm. definitely prevent those things from happening. So when you talk about clinical governance, that's about looking at events mm -hmm. and responding to it in, in for continuous improvement. Yes. Um, it's also about reviewing your policies and procedures. Absolutely. And also having um, people with clinical expertise that are having the oversight. Isn't Correct. It? Correct. What other things do you think is important for clinical governance? Um, Practical tips on how to do it well. Yeah. Well, again, you know, it's really about, um, as we say, it's you've got sophisticated systems in place is, is one thing that could help you. It's as best as um, the people using it because you could have a sophisticated system that captures all this data and people entering it, but if they're not also reporting properly, um, that doesn't mean to say that um, you get an accurate response. Right. So really it's about defining what you're capturing and also education with staff and making sure that they're empowered to actually think outside the square and analyze all of these things that are happening within the home to prevent that from occurring again. Um, so clinical governance really does go hand in hand with um, promoting a good culture of safe and quality care, um, as well as you know having a um, care that is of a caring and compassionate nature, as what the new standards say. So, um, any practical tips really is, is, is really about, you know, staff education, staff empowerment, and really showing and leading them the way towards that and, and, and to have one common goal, which is ultimately, you know, good care and what does that look like. And part of that education is also working with staff to understand that it's one thing to report, but yeah. understanding that where does that reporting go to and mm -hmm. what do yes. management do with those Absolutely. incidences, feedback that are important because mm. I think um, you run the risk if you don't respond mm. yes. that staff become complacent yes. or buy into all Quite these awesome. things and we'd never see anything. Mm. Mm. And it also comes with performance management as well, mm. as well. so if people are abusing um, other people then and they've got capacity for example a staff member then you do need to take action rather than and let Absolutely. it go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I find challenging as well is that obviously we've got vulnerable people who unfortunately have lost insight to their care needs and um, for some for some of them they might revert back to a traumatic time in their lives. So whatever it is that's happened now to them, they don't have insight that this person was not did not do that to me, but they're actually repeating what's happened in the past. What you also need to tell your staff is, you know, if it happens to you where you get accused and, you know, in, you actually know in your heart that you didn't actually do that, um, it's important for management to really tell the staff that 
when we're suspending someone and when we're actually going through the investigatory process, it's actually as equally to protect you and the vulnerable person as well. So going through that investigatory process actually disheartens staff because, you know, sometimes they think, oh, you know, um, I, I didn't do it, you know, or I wasn't mm -hmm. in the, I wasn't, wasn't in the room. Thing. But it's really important for um, management really to say that we are doing this for your protection as well as um, the um, consumers.